Morning, mate. How much are the games? Uh, three quid each or two for fiver. Yeah. How much are the That one. How much are the games? Uh, three quid each or two for fiver. Just hold on a sec, because he's first. Oh. 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 Hey, that one, mate. Rob, just grab him there, bro. Oh, hello, mate. How much are these ones? Uh, three quid each for two for a fiver. That's a good one. How much if how much if I took all of these ones, mate? Right. How much if I took them all? Took them all. How many we got there? Two, four, six, seven, eight, ten, thirty. Uh thirty quid. Thirty. Mm. Uh, tenner. Do you see them ones for a tenner, mate? Yeah, go on then. Yeah. I'll have a look at it, bro. Thank you, appreciate it. Why didn't you watch it to buy at the garage? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not a reseller. I, I buy games and stuff like that. I mean, I, I do a bit of re, you know, reselling and trading and that, but it's, yeah. it's mainly just me uh, collecting video games and stuff like that. Nothing too, uh, too crazy. Yeah, yeah. Take that one for a pound cheers mate. Thank you. Morning mate. How much is that? Five. Five million. What PlayStation 1 games have you got there as well? Sorry mate. Is it right, yeah? Yeah. Take three quid for that, mate. I won't, mate. No. Thanks for the offer, then. That's all right. Worth an ask. Okay, mate. Morning, how much that one? Three quid, that one. Three quid, yeah. Twelve seconds later. Take two quid for it, mate. Freeze cheap. <laughs> Thank you. 
worth an ask. <laughs> How much is this, mate? Uh, 50p. One for 50p. Mind you, I've been saying that I have actually got a few bottles before. How much is the keyboard, mate? Two quid. Two quid, yeah. Please. I think if I can clean it up. No bag, no bag. No bag. Ten seconds later. Uh, five quid on the boot. Which I had pound for that, mate, because it's so dirty. Yeah, come on. Yeah? So I'm going to have to clean it up. Yeah, that's familiar. And we are back, YouTube. For anyone who's returning, thank you. And for everyone who's new, welcome. I'm Mitch, and this is Retro Rummage. I'm in the game of channels buying games, DVDs, Blu-rays, any electrical items I get my hands on at car boot sales, Facebook Marketplace, or charity shops for a cheap price. So I'm getting traded into CX at a high price, so I can build my own gaming collection. So yes, back with another Sunday car boot sale pickup video. Um, unfortunately, I was only able to get out to one boot sale today. Normally I go to two. Um, got up for my first boot sale about, I think quarter past five in the morning. I normally get there for about six o'clock. Had to get some cash out. So I went to the cash machine um, and it started to rain. And I thought, you know what, I'm not even gonna bother. I've been to this car boot sale before when it's like spitting, but they, on their Facebook page, they say it's on. Um, and I've been and it's been terrible. So I just thought, no, I'm gonna get back in bed and I'll see if this later one uh, is gonna be on, obviously after a couple of hours. So I woke up at about half, went, got in, went back to sleep, woke up at about half seven, quarter to eight. This one starts at nine o'clock in the morning. Um, checked on the Facebook page and they said they're open. So I thought, right, jump in the motor um, and I'll get there. So that, that was the plan. Um, but before I get into that, um, <laughs> I just wanted to first of all state my absolute hatred for the new CEX app. <laughs> I don't know how anyone else has been getting on with it, but I cannot stand it, it is terrible. Um, I'll get into as to why, because obviously I realized um, at the boot sale, I mean, I, I, was, I was using it briefly um, before I'd been to a boot sale. I think I updated on like Thursday or something for me. There are some people who said that they've still got the old app. Um, but for some reason it done it for me on Thursday uh, as the new one. Um, obviously scanning barcodes and everything's fine, but what they've changed, which I think is absolutely terrible, is the search function. So before, if you was to type Metal Gear Solid PS1, everything for it would just come up. Obviously there would be pictures and you know you could scroll through what's in stock, what's out of stock, trading value and stuff like that. But, but what they've done now is that when you type something into search you have a drop down bar and it will just say like Metal Gear Solid PlayStation 1 and then it will list all of the games but in text format um, but you, you're missing half of it off the screen so you don't know exactly what's what which for games isn't too bad but the problem is is when you're searching for uh, electronics and stuff like that that's not necessarily you're not 100% sure of the model and you'd like to look through and see what the picture is you're not able to do that um, you have to know exactly the model that you're looking for to type it in because also if you are then vague and type in for example Apple keyboard all that will come up is the stock that's in stock they won't so if you're looking for something that may not necessarily be in stock but they accept it for trading you have to search for that part of uh, that item specifically because what will happen is if you put Apple keyboard in you then have to refine the search to exclude in store, um, sorry, in stock, in store, and uh, online. And it's just an absolute faff. It's so difficult when you're out in the wild, shall we say, looking to search for things. I cannot stand it. I mean, you know, I, I don't want to be one of these people who are always moaning about change and stuff like that, but there is a saying if it ain't broke, don't fix it for a reason. And yeah, it's. It's made it a lot more difficult for me. Hopefully they'll change it. I, I was so annoyed by it, I sent them feedback <laughs> through the app. I'd like, you know, gave my email address and, and filled it all out. Um, if you're like me and you absolutely hate the new app, please do the same as well because they need to make some changes to it. But let, let me know in the comments how you're getting on with the new app. Do you like it? Do you hate it? What do you find good about it? What do you find bad about it? I'll be interested to get to get your thoughts. But um, 
But yeah, anyway, enough of that. Um, we'll go over the pickups. Obviously, there's probably some people who've already mentioned in the comments um, <laughs> about the vultures, shall we say, that basically I've said before about this boot sale, um, it's a smash and grab um, type of boot sale in that. It opens at nine o'clock. There's no buying before then. They're very, very strict. They make sure that other buyers are not, uh, sorry, other sellers are not going to other stalls and stuff like that. And they make everyone who is a buyer wait over one side of the car park until nine o'clock. And then they shout go and everyone walks over sort of, or runs over. And obviously if you don't get something good within the first couple of minutes, um, you're more than likely not gonna get something good because it all just gets taken straight away. Now, I was lucky enough that I did come across something good, but I took for granted how quick the vultures would <laughs> would act. Now I know that if something's not in my hands at a boot sale, um, although I wouldn't say it is, but it technically it's, it's free game, shall we say? Um, and people jumped on that sort of thing. And basically, I walked, up, as you see in the footage, walked up to the store. They had a big stack of PlayStation. What I thought anyway initially was just PlayStation Four games and some Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty games. Um, I'm like a moth to flame with the, the green of an Xbox 360 case. Um, I need to get out of that habit. Did check them ones quickly first and then went to the PlayStation 4. Um, and yeah, he said £3 a game. And in hindsight, it's easy, to, it's easy to say this now that I should have... He said three quid a game, two, two for a fiver. I should have said to him, because I, I know now all of the games had good trading, uh, what about if I give you £2 for each game, mate? Um, I'll have them all. That's what I should have said, um, that's what I should have done, but I've come across stacks of games like this before, and you know, there'll be 10 copies of FIFA in there, a Tom, you know, a Rainbow Six, or you know, something that trades in for like a couple of quid, stuff like that. Um, so I was quickly looking through the tower of games, and <laughs> it does make me laugh in the food. You can see all of these feet come up next to me. Um, then the hands started going and I started grabbing the games and, and luckily I think I got the pick of the litter um, but there were a couple of good ones I missed out on um, there was probably more that I should have picked, picked up um, I did and again this goes back to how bad the CEX app is that there was a couple of others that I checked and I think that they've flipped where the cash value and trading value is on the app so when I was initially looking at it I thought it was trading in for say seven pound uh, voucher or something like that but um, it was actually seven pound cash and it would be trading for like 14 pound voucher something like that so that threw me off a little bit as well um, but yeah you know like I say hindsight's always great I've been in situations before where I've had arguments about people reaching over and stuff like that and it ruins the rest of the boot sale for me because my adrenaline's all pumping and I've not done anything to, to release it apart from get myself more angry and then I'm you know, sitting there thinking I should have done this or I should have said that sort of thing, and it just winds me up even more. So I've learned not, I'm not, I don't let it get to me like that. Um, but in hindsight, I should have grabbed the game, should have made him an offer for all of them quicker. Um, but yeah, it did, it did make me laugh watching the footage back as well because there, obviously, you can see in the footage, I'm first there after the games anyway. I think someone else was there, but they were looking at a laptop. Um, and obviously people are grabbing the games and there's someone else going, all right, mate, calm down, I was here first. <laughs> I'm like, well, you've got the hunt with them for leaning over you, but you're, because you was there first, but I was here before and you, you, and you're happy to lean over me. It just don't make any, like, it, it, it's like they're oblivious to their own actions and, and how they act around other people. Um, but yeah, like I say, and in hindsight, could have, could have been, could have acted better. I'm sure people will be telling me in the comments, I should have done this, I should have done that, but I'm happy with what I've got. Um, so yeah, as you see in the footage, I paid a tenner for these, and three of them are PlayStation 5 games, which is which is unreal to be honest. To be getting these um, at a boot sale for you know PlayStation 5 games for three quid each is crazy. But yeah, got Need for Speed Heat. I think that's trading in for like twelve pound voucher. Um, Call of Duty Modern Warfare. That's trading for like six pound voucher. This was the pick of the litter. Got Alan Wake remastered. Um, that's trading for twenty pound uh, at CEX. It's like a thirty pound game. Um, Call of Duty Vanguard, I think that's trading for like £12 as well. Uh, and then Subnautica Below Zero. Um, again, I think these are all in pretty good, they're all in pretty good condition as well, to be honest. But I think that's dropping in for maybe 10 to £12 as well. So I think for my tenner that I spent there, I'll be getting like 50 to £60 voucher, something like that. So yeah, it could have been better, but I'm happy with what I've got. 
Um, and it's, it's an opportunity to learn at the end of the day. Like I always say, you've got to be vigilant, not only with you know, what other people are doing, but how you're acting in yourself as well. You know, you've got to understand that there are people that are going to be absolute savages. They're going to do what they can to, to get the games before you do. So you've got to make sure you do what you can, everything you can do before then, if that makes sense. So I'm, like I say, we, we don't make mistakes, we just learn. <laughs> but yeah, apart from that, like I say, so that was the, the best pickup. And then after that, you know, you go around and you get a few little other pickups. So uh, in no particular order, uh, this was a good one for the collection, Minority Report, Everybody Runs, nice and complete, in pretty good condition as well. The, the manual looks uh, pretty minty, if I don't say myself. Not an expensive game, I think that's maybe like three or four pound in CEX, but great film in my opinion as well. Um, but yeah, I, I, I like, I've, I'm kind of getting a subset of movies into games, if that makes sense. I've got quite a few down there now, I've got like Underworld, Terminator, um, yeah, Minority Report, uh, Predator, Alien vs Predator, all, all of those kind of, kind of games. So I'm kind of aiming towards collecting them. And obviously it is nice to, to get out and get a game for your own collection. Um, as some of you may have seen in my last CEX roulette, I've now got a PlayStation 3. So I'm hoping that in my next video, uh, I may be able to pick up some PlayStation 3 games for my own collection as well. So that would be nice. But yeah, nice one for the, uh, for the collection there. Let me know if you played it as well, if it's a good game. I haven't played it yet. Um, a FIFA, one to look out for, FIFA 23. Um, yeah, I think he said three pound. It trades him for eight pounds. So I gave him a cheeky two pound. You know, would you take two pound for it? And he was like, no, three pounds cheap. And I was like, fair enough, it is cheap. <laughs> so yeah, three pound there into eight pound. Um, just one pound shy of tripling my money. But obviously, the money that I'm making off of them will will more than make up for that. Uh, and then yes, I've got a. I think this is a first gen uh, Apple keyboard. Now. I don't know if you could see in the footage, but it was absolutely filthy. But I've cleaned it all up now, and it's looking quite nice, to be honest. Uh, from this this angle, anyway, um, is a little bit scratched underneath there. There's a bit of dirt in there, which I couldn't get to, because unfortunately I don't have the correct uh, screwdriver for this one. But yeah, took it out into the garden, took the, the like popped all of the keys off, took the hairdryer over it, uh, put all of the keys into warm soapy water, scrubbed them off, scrubbed all underneath as well, and gave it a right good clean up. Um, the B version of that trades in for £11, and the C version, which is quite a difference to be honest, trades in for £5, I think, voucher. Um, but either way, £1 into £5 or hopefully £11, that's re a really good markup. And, I, you know, doing things like that, I don't mind, you know, taking the punt on it, cleaning it up, and, you know, trading it in if you can get it for cheap. So that, that would be another tip that I would say, you know, don't be scared to, to buy these things that are maybe a little bit dirty, because it, it took me like. 20 minutes, half hour to clean up. It, it didn't take that long at all. So, you know, maybe you think it's not worth it, but I, I was happy to do it. Um, this was a nice find. We've got um, a so official Sony PlayStation mouse. Um, now, I'm surprised that he said a fiver for this, to be fair, because I initially went to this uh, stall and he had quite a lot of gaming stuff there, um, some, some games at the back that he let me come around and have a look at. And the prices were there or thereabouts. Some of it was probably a little more expensive than I would think to, people would charge at a boot sale. But this, um, I picked it up and he said a fiver at first. And I was thinking to myself, I'm sure they're worth like 25, 30 pound, like just, you know, on their own sort of thing. So I had a quick look on the app, which took me ages to <laughs> to find it because i'm having, having difficulties with it but yeah it trades in for 16 pound uh voucher and it was, yeah 16 pound voucher or they sell it for like 22 pounds something like that um and i'm in two minds as to whether to keep it or not i do have a third party one down there which i got for a, a couple of quid uh, last year I, I, I do ideally want a boxed version of it so i can have it go up there with the rest but for for now i may keep it um, but if not, £5 into £16 voucher there, so more than happy with that. Uh, and then, yeah, this was my well, cheapest pickup of the day, I think. Oh, no, actually, the car as well. But, yeah, Only Fools and Horses, Series 1 to 7. Paid 50p for it. Um, it was soaking wet, and it has warped a little bit. So I'm hoping that they'll, um, they'll take it. The discs and everything are fine. But, yeah, 50p uh, into to £3 there, hopefully. More than happy with that. And then, yeah, last, last pick-up, well, last pick-up that we're going over anyway, I don't, don't know if it was in that order, but, um, yeah, I've got, shout-out to Tom's Tat. I've said in a couple of my previous videos, uh, watch a lot of his stuff, and he's always picking up these Corgi cars. Now, this is uh, a Corgi 
Bentley, I believe 1947 or 1927, definitely ended in a seven. Um, I've done a quick Google lens of it when I was there and there have been some of these that are selling for like 15 to 20 pound. Now, unfortunately, mine does have a wheel missing, but I paid 50p for it. Um, and in Tom's videos, he does say that people restore these as well. So, you know, I thought for 50p, it's worth, it's a learning exercise, if, if anything. Um, and yeah, maybe I'll be able to turn, you know, 50p into five, six pounds, maybe even a little bit more, we'll see. But um, yeah, shout out to Tom, hopefully uh, turn that into a nice little profit. But yeah, that's it in terms of pickups. Um, yeah, as winter boot sales goes, pretty decent. Nice to get PlayStation 5 games in the wild for cheap. You don't, don't see that often. Um, but yeah, really, really happy. I think I maybe spent like 18 pounds, something like that. And I'll probably be getting, you know, if I decide to trade the mouse in and I get the, the B grade for that uh, keyboard, 80 pound voucher, something like that. So all, all in all, a good day. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it. Obviously let me know if there was anything I missed. Um, you know, apart from the stack of PlayStation 4 games, I know that there was going to be ones that I missed there, but hey-ho, that's just how it goes. Um, but yes, it's that time of week again for Games Room of the Week. Um, although this is the last one that I've got at the moment, so if you'd like to feature, please do hit me up on uh, Instagram. We'll sort out um, you sending over a video and I'll, I'll upload it on my next or one of my next um, boot sale pickup videos. But yeah, this one is for uh, Damien or, or shout out to Sir Crazy Daisy, um, as his friends like to call him. He's, uh, yeah, I've been sp I spoke to him a few times before. He said that um, he's, uh, you know, been following my channel a long time. We spoke about games that he's got, I've got. He sent me over a, a couple of pictures of his games from in the past, I believe, as well. And yeah, he, he said oh, he'd be more than happy to, to send over a video. So yeah, he's done that. We'll, we'll go over the footage now. And then yeah, we'll do a little recap afterwards. So yeah, catch you in a minute. All right, voiceover Mitch, back in the house. First impressions, very, very clean and tidy room from Damien here. So uh, shout out to that, always appreciate um, a nice clean games room. Although mine is not always as clean as I'd like it to be. But yes, consoles here. Ikea must make an absolute killing from the shelving unit. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that it's in 90% of, uh, of games rooms out there, but it is ideal. Toys here as well, which is nice to see. I'm not a big toy collector myself, but Mighty Max uh, back in the day absolutely loved that as a kid. Um, so that's pure nostalgia for me. I think I had a couple of them there as well. But yeah, we've got a nice little setup here arcade stick and connect up to a TV, Game Boys there, Mega Drive, Pokemon Stadium, DS. What, what I like about Damien's room as well is it's although it's a games room, it's kind of you know in the same ilk as retro ghettos in that it's you know it's like a museum. It's not just, oh yeah, this is all my games. You've got toys and everything ties in. You know, there's a there's a theme to it, should we say? Funko Pops here, um, some teddies. I've recognised those teddies. Uh, obviously, the Beanie Baby things, but I'm not sure exactly what they are. I think they've got some value to them. Transformers there, more Funko Pops. Kind of missed the boat on Funko Pops myself. I think, um, I mean, they, they look, uh, you know, they look cool on the shelf. Um, I know some of them have got value that they are collectible, but I just don't know too much about them, to be honest. And we've got Thundercats here, more Funko Pops, Power Rangers, I believe those ones are. Let me know in the comments if any of these uh, Funko Pops are, are worth money as well. I'm always keen to uh, to learn. More Transformers here. Again, I watch Master, uh, sorry, Master of Pieces, Ian. He, I know he collects all of the Transformers, and some of them have got some serious value to them. Wrestling figures here as well. Now... I must admit, even as a kid, I was never into wrestling. I mean, I've still got I've got mates who still go and watch wrestling uh, to this day, and they're like, you know, pushing forty. <laughs> but um, yeah, just never interested me really. And and I'm probably one of the only few gamers that's not into it. I think every other gaming room that uh, people have submitted, they've got some form of wrestling memorabilia in their room, uh, in one form or another. But yeah, more Funko Pops here. I think they were these He Man. Then we got. More Funko Pops, Jurassic Park. Now that that is something I loved as a kid. Jurassic Park was one of my favourite films growing up as a kid. I think I went to the pictures maybe like two or three times to watch the original one. Bear in mind I was about six then, but yeah, absolutely loved it. More Funko Pops. We've got Transformer shoes there. <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles as well. Love that as a kid. 
Yeah, like I say, it's, it's nice. It's got it's got a theme to it. You know, you've got each. It's got Jurassic Park shelf there, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's also got the Funko Pops to tie in with it as well. It's a really nice, really nice room. To be fair, it's it's set out um, very, very nice. We've got a wall of games here. Yeah, a bit of everything. N sixty four, Switch, Dreamcast. I think so. Spot some PlayStation One in the corner over there. Master System. Yeah, we've got Wii U down here, GameCube. Small GameCube collection like myself, not massive. Wii U I don't have. Manhunt on the Wii is always like, feels like an oxymoron. I think that's the word. Um, and the same with Silent Hill, that I always imagine the Wii to be, you know, like a children and families console. And then for them to have Manhunt and Silent Hill on it. <laughs> uh, PlayStation 2 here. Robocop, that's a game that I want. Um, I recent, well, I literally just said in uh, this video that you know I like the the subset of films into games. So that's a that's a uh, and obviously Robocop is a great film. So that's a game that I'll, I'll be after. Xbox three sixty here got the HD collection, Silent Hill. Although I've heard that uh, it's not very very good the the remake, and it's actually better to play the old ones. But maybe it's different on the Xbox. Looks like uh, Damien's going for an Essentials uh, essential subset there, like that um, Retro Ghetto. PlayStation 3 I've just recently picked up as well, so hopefully I'll be grabbing some of those games for my collection. Then we've got PlayStation 4 there as well. Some Master System, Al Alien Storm, great, great game. Some a few NES there as well. <laughs> I absolutely love that mask. Um, I love the mask as a kid. I mean, I watch it as an adult now, and I think, how that was ever classed as a... A children's film, I do not know. I mean, there's a scene in it where there's a bank robber dying in a nightclub with a fag in his mouth. And I'm pretty sure I went to the pictures to see that at like four or five years old. But <laughs> times have changed, I suppose. But yeah, great film. Some nice, uh, what are these, N64 games here? They're looking minty fresh in the old box protectors. They are they are really good, those box, box protectors. They enough, uh, you know, bring the games up, make them look... Basically mint. I mean, maybe these games are mint, but um, they definitely the box protectors definitely help in that case. Got some Switch games here as well. Another console that's uh, that's kind of passed me by. Maybe I'll grab it in the future. I keep being told that it'll be the last console that we'll get physical media on, um, but we'll see. More Transformers there. The old uh, annuals as well. I know that B Rad loves uh, an annual. So I don't know. If they're worth anything, but but they look cool, that's for sure. More Switch games here. Perky Little Things. <laughs> Wonder what that game's about. And yeah, now we're into uh, My Realm, PlayStation 1. Evil Dead, that's the game that I need. Although it looks like Damien's only got a small PlayStation 1 collection, mate. It looks like you're going to have to uh, get a few more games for that, I think. Transformers. Yeah, it seems that Damien's a massive... Uh, Transformers fan for sure. Quite a lot of people are into Transformers as well, to be fair. But I did like the films um, and obviously the cartoons as a kid, but what a massive fan. We've got here Dreamcast, small Dreamcast uh, collection there as well, but still some good good games. Mortal Kombat Funko Pops. Uh, some He Man ones here as well. So yeah, I don't know whether I'll get into Funko Pops or not. There's some that I'd like, but I've, I've, I bet the ones that I want are probably worth hundreds now because there was a limited run back when they first come out. But but we'll see. But yeah, all in all, a very, very nice games room. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll go over it and I'll, I'll see you back in my games room. So yes, shout out to uh, Damien, a.k.a. Sir Crazy Daisy. <laughs> Once again, mate, appreciate you sending in footage of your games room and sharing that with us. Really, really nice games room. Um, if there's one thing that I could say, uh, or one compliment that I could give to him, although it's not on the same scale, uh, is in size. It's, uh, in my opinion, reminded me a lot of um, Callum's from the Retro Ghetto's game room. Everything tied in with each other. It was more like a museum rather than, uh, you know, like a games room, shall we say. But yeah, really, really nice games room. The only thing that I would say is that his PlayStation 1 collection is lacking and uh, he needs to get a couple of more games for that. But apart from that, can't fault it. 
but yeah, once again, thank you for uh, sending that footage in, Damien. Um, if anyone else would like to feature on Games Room of the Week, month, whatever, please do hit me up on Instagram. Um, yeah, haven't got anything else in the pipeline at the moment, so hopefully someone else will reach out to me. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed the video, everyone. Take care, and I'll see you all in the next one.